всегда ли за политическими руководителями стран стоят какие-то... Are there always certain forces standing behind political country leaders? To what extent are the leaders aware of that? And do they always act according to the will of these forces? The questions are quite monotypic, and I will answer them in the context of our previous discussion. Are there certain forces standing behind political country leaders? Without a doubt, they always do. Do they know about it? Not, not always. But there are some political leaders who are akin to a knot on the fabric of reality, who bear a great responsibility. They, as a rule, will always have a conscious agreement. Meaning that it, it isn't an agreement that a warlock would make with the force he will work with, which is usually made when emotionally charged, in a stressful situation. No. In this case, it is a conscious agreement. And usually this agreement is perfectly clear to that leader. Another thing is whether this agreement is being fulfilled or not. And if it is not, it will always end badly for the leader, as well as for the force that counts on this consciousness, and also on all others who consider themselves as a part of that movement or belonging to that leader. In this instance, we see the serfdom principle in action. You see, the serfdom institution has been forming itself for quite a long time, but went into its most pronounced and full effect during the time of Abrahamic religions. Here it has reached its full culmination, when a person voluntarily agrees to be a serf. Prior to this, during the time of paganism, one could become a serf only according to certain circumstances. If one lost a war, for example, or in case of an excessive debt, or in case of being at fault and unable to pay ransom. But these cases were always few and limited, and they overall were always clear and known. But for someone who was free by birth, for him to suddenly become a serf, that sort of thing did not exist yet. But it happened, such was the experiment. Who is a serf in relation to his master? A serf is his master's property. And what if the master needs to settle his debts? Who will he use as payment? I think you have a clue. Exactly, he will use his property, his flock, entrusted into his care. They aren't even people, they are flock. Gods pay for the results of their actions according to the global scale outcomes that they achieve. They put their stake on a certain individual in the form of an appointed head, chosen, as it were. And those who agree to belong to this head are not really that different from those who are part of a serfdom institution. They delegate to the master their right to exercise their freedom in exchange for safety. Look around. How many people have delegated their right to freedom in exchange for safety? Formally, it is an acknowledgement. An acknowledgement of the inability to manage one's own life, own fate, inability to build own reality, and a necessary participation in an alien reality. Is this the goal? Not at all. That is not a goal. It is not a goal for anyone. It's a test. Because when the Abrahamic channels will face performance review and will have to pay off all the adverse effects of their action, they will need something to pay it up with. And what can be better according to the Christian doctrine, than a voluntary sacrifice. Nothing can be better. Because that is the principle which was set into the foundation of our civilization some 2,000 years ago.